Yo, what's up guys, Old School Dan here, and welcome back to another Reg Park video, training the Reg Park weight. This one is all about back, so this is going to be an interesting one, because we all know that Reg Park was renowned for his back and chest, and well, pretty much all of his physique, so anyways, let's get started. Reg was also renowned for his back, he had a lot of density in his back, a lot of thickness, and the core movement he used to use in the early days was barbell rows. Uh, we actually got up to using very, you know, big poundages over 300 pounds right. on barbell rows. Again, we would employ the five by five principle. So what we've gone through this morning is all the compound movements, your nucleus of each body part. Of course, there's other exercises which we call secondary movement. Wow. So Reg Park's workouts were a lot based pretty much on compounds not like the workouts you see up today everybody's doing like some new random shit for like their biceps their back and it's just like it's not a compound movement they're doing all like these isolation ones but wrench parks workouts are mainly both based on compounds like squats deadlift um, um bench press uh presses rows pull-ups not like the workouts of today where it's like a lot of people are just missing out on the comp and exercises and they're more concerned about the isolation. And the compounds are really the best for building the muscle. To hit those body parts, but the compound movements are the ones where you handle the most poundage and engage all parts of the back. So he would do five sets of five bend over barbell rows. Okay. And I remember yeah, everyone you'd see doing again the wide grip barbell rows. Yes. And then he taught me, which we're going to do as well, yeah. the reverse grip, pulling into the waist, pulling into the hips, which just fires the muscle in a different direction. And it brings more of the lower right. lats into play. That's how it ties the lower lats in, gives your, your lats length. He was a big advocate in... Okay, this is the part I have an issue with, which is which says ties the length. Now, let's be honest here. This is actually true. Your genetics are set. Your insertions are fixed. You cannot lengthen a muscle. If you're born with high lats, you could technically make them longer, but it's not going to make a, a big, big difference. It's going to be like minuscule, all right? If you're born with it, yeah, there's like no possible way. It's like saying, oh, I got a long, I got a long bicep, um, or I got, a, I actually, I got, a, I got a high bicep. Let me make it longer by doing my preacher curls. Your insertions and genetics, they're all fixed. There's no possible way for you to actually lengthen a muscle. So that is an old school myth that I wanted to break away from everybody because that's just some, that's just bro science because that's just how it is to like, really think about it. You can't really like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense scientifically. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. So let's throw that part out, out there where he says, where he says to add the length of the lats because no such thing as adding length to the lats if you have high lats, no matter how many underhand movements you do that actually stretch the lats, there's no way you're going to lengthen it. Sorry about that. Working the entire muscle. Yeah. So bend over again, wider than shoulder width, feet apart, butt outwards, exhaling and pulling the bar up and inhaling on the way down. Also, another point I want to talk about, Arthur Jones was talking about how he thinks it's stupid for people to waste their time doing a wide grip chin-up versus via close grip. And the reason being is because when you're doing a, a, a wide grip on, so let's just say pull-ups, you're limiting, you're limiting the range of motion, okay? So you're getting like a smaller range of motion, whereas if you were to do a closer grip, it would be so, like, for example, look at this, like that. And let's do it in our hands. So it's like there's so much more stretch in the lats. You get a better contraction. Not not contraction, but you get a better stretch. And that's actually going to fatigue and stimulate more muscle fibers compared via um, wide grip. Okay. So in in this case, um, it seems like he could be hitting a little bit more of the rear delts, you know, with this wide grip and a little bit of the lats. But I think like Dorian Yates, good example. Never once in his career did he really do wide grip pull-ups. He always did close grip. And someone like Dorian Yates was well known for his back. 
but this is a good and this is a good point that I brought up because a lot of people still believe that they think that oh if I do if I do wide group chin ups you know I'm gonna get the, the wide back and I think I think doing a closer grip chin up something with a closer or medium grip is definitely gonna give you a wider back because of the stretch you're gonna get from it you're gonna stimulate you're gonna stimulate and activate more muscle fibers with this with this type of um, movement so something else I want to point out. This doesn't apply to the bench press because with the wide grip bench press and the close grip bench presses, they they pretty much will hit stimulate the same amount of muscle fibers just in different areas. But that's another that's another story. But anyways, let's keep going going with the video. And you can feel how it brings the lats into play, the upper back, the lats. But then again, as he started getting more and more advanced and learning more, he progressed into what he, uh, what was a reverse grip. It's interesting because uh, in the 90s, there's a guy in the scene called Dorian Yates, who's a five-time Mr. Olympia. And he actually said that uh, he was the one who invented reverse grip barbell wow. rows, which is not really true. Reg was doing it years and years ago. So you take a closer grip, more shoulder width, and bring the weight into the waist. And as you said earlier, engage more of the lower lats. Well, there's a line of equipment that actually called it the Dorian the Yates uh, rows that you get now, which is pretty much you're taking the narrower grip. Again, pulling it, but here yeah, you pull the elbows in. Now, this is a good exercise. The only thing I don't like it is that you can actually tear your bicep if you go really heavy in this exercise. That's also why I don't like doing a deadlift with this type of grip where it's like one hand under, one hand over, because you, I've seen people tear a bicep like that. That's why I always do a lot of my movements, you know, overhand. You know, when I do a bend or a row or or my deadlifts, you know, my remaining deadlifts, my regular deadlifts, I always do overhand. Never do I do under and over anymore. I mostly just do overhand. Just because of that reason, because I've seen so I've seen it happen to so many people. And it could happen to anybody, you know. You sometimes you just think, oh it won't happen to me. But then, you know, it does happen to you. So you should be careful with that one. It's a good exercise, but I just think you got to be careful with it. So now the, the, now the lower lats are, are, are more engaged in the movement. You're still getting a lot of upper back work, a lot of rear delts in here as well, which is back of the shoulder, middle back, and lower lats. And Reg also used to love, uh, as you know, Steve, doing T-bar rows, which is wow. another variation of this. As a gym owner, as a trainer, you know that another variation of that would be a dumbbell row. And if you walk into any gym, you see the conventional way of doing a dumbbell row is like this. And in all the years, I've never saw Reg do a dumbbell row like that or teach one of his pupils because he felt a you're putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on the supporting knee joint b there's a lot of rotation on the discs at the bottom of the movement and c you're only working your lat in one direction downwards so what he would actually do is he would take a support i'll use this for now just for convenience sake and he would rest his forearm and his head on the support, take the dumbbell from the inside foot and pull it across the body. And in this way, what he would be achieving is working the, the lat muscle from two dimensions, not just working down the lat, but also across the lat. So he was achieving, in his thinking, both length of muscle, width of muscle as well, and thickness with one movement as opposed to just working it one dimensionally and locking your your lower discs into one position and then getting that rotation because also with the length of his torso having a long torso barbell rose after a while started bothering him right. so he started getting into other movements he like had me do that with low pulley low cable rose. 45 degrees Yes. And pulling it this yes. way, yes. actually. That, that was the variation he gave me of that. 
All right, so that was like actually my second, you know, that's actually my first time watching the whole thing because I watched a little bit of it and I was like, you know what, this is good enough to post on my YouTube channel and I that was a pretty good, I, got a, yeah, I think you guys got a lot of value from that one. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. With that being said, subscribe for more videos like this. Give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm Old School Dan. I'm gone. Peace.